So let's rework actually our lock on a little bit and basically how we decide what's to lock on and what's not. And this can be done fairly simple. Instead of doing this every time we yeah instead of doing this every time we press a key we will be doing this all the time so what we should do is instead of well actually inside the get lock on target okay lockable no the find lockable target even if i wrote that wrong this will be happening all the time so inside our controller i'm going to create a new method void update lockable targets then we're going to have a list of i lockable let's call them lockables and then we're going to be doing this on each frame on every frame we have so update lockables we don't of course need to return that so we're going to be adding or we're going to be saying if lockables dot or well you know what we could just say lockables dot clear although yeah okay we'll see lockables dot clear and lockables dot add lockables let's rename this to lockables list so we know what we're actually adding so a few gotchas with this but first let's move this and let's make this into a public void actually and I'm going to go inside my input manager inside my update why I'm going to put this inside the update and more specifically before we are pressing we are doing the check for the lock on is so that I know if there is any lockables we're going to be returning that uh, we're going to be to have already sampled our what's around our controller okay and so we know that we will have inputs now one problem we're going to be running this overlap sphere on everything pretty much and on all the layers that exist that uh, that means and we're going to be doing this on every frame there's two ways to fix this you could just filter out with the layer mask let's see and actually we have get component in parent okay so the enemy boxman split just on default agent yeah i'm just going to be looking for this capsule collider this on the layer ground which i don't know why but let's fix that on the layer enemy okay so our enemy will now be on the enemy layer and let's delete the other enemy we only want one let's go over here duplicate that and move him on the side okay so we have our two enemies on layer enemy then we could just say this is the the 12th layer so we can say layer mask mask equals 12 or so it will only happen on this layer and then do this so this will be sampling each frame the other thing that we could do is have a timer a lock sample rate and we're going to be saying if lock sample 
rate is less than zero, do this, then lock sample rate set that to one, else lock sample rate time dot delta time. And this will be happening all the time, so every other second. So this will be if searching for locks once every second. So it's much more manageable because you don't need to actually, you know, you're not going to be traveling that far away distances to to worry about this. So let's do the back dot log colliders dot length and see how many we're getting from this. Okay, so we get the two of them. That's what we need. We only get the two colliders, the two items. Now, uh, come to think of it, I might just want to to, to not clear every time we have. So we're only going to be adding them if they're not contained. So we won't be messing up with our indexes that we're going to use later. Of course, uh, if it is, we can do check distance over here if you want to, to remove them. We should do it, but for now, you know, whatever. Well, actually, okay, let's do that. So let's do float distance vector three dot distance between transfer dot position and lockable dot get lock on transform this. Let's see what this is in here. This just retains your transform, okay? This dot transform, okay? And what? Yeah, dot position. And if distance is greater than, let's say 20, which is this position, 20 as well, then remove them. Lockables list dot remove lockable. Okay, then when we say find lockable target now, we're going to be finding the distance. Uh, yeah, that will be float dot max value, then for lockables list dot count float temp distance equals vector three dot distance between transfer dot position and lockables list i dot get lock on target this dot transform dot position if temporary distance is less than the distance then temporary distance will be temporary distance will be the new distance okay then we need the result stuff as null then result will be lockable list And down here, return the result. Okay, so this will get you the closest lockable target. Now, uh, yeah, okay. The other thing that we can do is actually move the lockable targets. Well, okay, screw that. Let's see if this is going to work. And then we're going to cycle around the lockable targets and I'll show you how easy it is to add to actually add so click play 
Okay, we're locking, but of course we can't actually say that we are changing locks. So to do that, we're going to do a public void cha change index of lock. And of course we need to know if we're going negative or positive. First thing we need to do is to get the index of the current lockable and we will do that lockables list index of current lockable okay first things first though let's initialize that as minus one if lockables list dot contains current lockable first of all then get the, that index uh, let's start with zero here so to get that index we're going to do current uh, or blockables list index of Uh, kind of lockable okay then whatever happens to that index we're going to say index equals if it's negative index minus one or index plus one okay if index is less than zero then index is lockables list dot count minus one if index is greater than lockable list dot count minus one index equals zero then i lockable return lockable list index okay remove that so we just need to trigger now the change index of lock and the current lockable that's about it so for that we're going to create a new button on the right thumbstick so let's create a new action let's call this change lock target and well there's we could use that as a as a button okay and then path let's see we have a right stick uh, left down left right left right I guess let's do left change lock target left and duplicate that change lock target right and then let's do right stick right okay save asset then on the input manager if is locked on so locked on If lock on, yeah, we're doing all of that. Here's the thing, though. So we could do controller lock on. Okay, we could do void handle lock on targets index. If controller dot lock on if you're not in lock on return else and on the else we basically need the current lockable and if we're doing left or right so we're going to do bool is left or is negative or whatever 
and we will be saying controller dot handle or change index of lock current lockable and is left uh, well actually is left and current lockable one more thing if current lockable is null return okay so we just need to add this inside our input methods so in awake or start let's see where do we have this or let's just search for performed over here okay that's on start we can now do keys dot player dot change lock target left dot performed i equals lock or change or handle lock on targets index and that's the left so that will be true du duplicate that for change lock target right and change this for false okay save that and that should do it i think so we should be able to to browse through different enemies with our right uh, thumb okay let's do it like this let's hit play okay so the left and right thumb doesn't actually work I, I don't know if it doesn't work because we missed something or because we are not calling the events so let's see is this even going coming here or not maybe this oh yeah okay here's what we are missing current lockable now should be the new lockable and of course that means the lock on target is now the current lockable get lock on target controller dot transform minimize that hit play and let's see it now and yeah true enough that happens uh, it works fine but the camera is only need to update so that basically means we forgot to to change this lock target uh, where's the lock target in this context there's no lock target in this context but we could just get like this okay now this goes way too fast of course and if we are, are yeah there's not that weight to this basically so there's two ways to solve this we can either solve this by here by adding a processor let's do this only on the right and we will set the minimum dead zone to be 0.9 then save as it so everything below 0.9 will not trigger it as a button and that didn't work okay let's improvise let's close that then change lock tag left let's see action button type value and pass through yeah okay so i'm going to do this differently i'm going to say create a new action change lock and this will be a value and control type 
will be of axis then for binding it's going to be right stick let's see right stick I X right stick X okay save that I'm not going to delete these just yet because we might use them but I'm definitely going to go on start here and I'm going to make this to I uh, come this out so we actually have the mouse X already so all we have to do now is if you are in lock on let's see uh, then we're going to say bull uh, actually control is lock on down here we can do this we can say bull is mm, or mouse x or let's call it x is at one okay so actually we could just say if uh, mouse x is less than minus 0.9 f and now that I think about is at minus one okay so So that basically means they are nine. They are at nine, and we will say if x if not x is at one. If not x is at one. Look for that, and if it is, if mouse x is less or equals than zero, x is at one equals false. Okay, and we need to do the same thing with this over here. So if x, if not x is at minus one, take that, drop that in here. Else, if mouse x is greater or equals than zero, then make this false again. Okay, now let's encapsulate all of this. We don't need this one anymore. We don't need this one anymore. We're just going to get all of these. Cut them. And paste them in here. Okay, so. This will control all of this. We do want this our variable to update even if we are not in lock on. If, and even if we are not in the lockable, I guess. So, uh, can lockable. All we need to do is then if or x is at one, and then for here we could just say if we are in here. This is the left, so we want the minus. So if this is false, then that means we came in this statement from this one. So all we do now is just take this and drop it inside update. And this will work just fine. Well, I'm guessing it will work just fine. We can delete this to now. We don't really need them as buttons. And let's give it a try. And true enough, they do work. Uh, they do not work that well, I guess. Okay, that's too 
too fast, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a timer onto this. So, if change timer is greater than zero, uh, return. Uh, if yeah, okay, return. But first, of course, change timer time dot delta time, and then in here change timer. Oops. Change timer. Let's just set this to two seconds. So if you're holding down on two seconds, then you will only be changing the that your targets every two seconds. So if you're holding down on the button. And as you can see, I'm do, I do change targets. So let's also fix that jacking line. And in here, all we have to do is vector three dot lerp this position with this position and of course by time dot delta time let's do by point 3f so it doesn't jerk anymore let's see and true enough. It doesn't jerk. And we can go through each of the other units, each of the other enemies by index. Of course, we don't really filter them based on left or right or whatever. We can add that if you want. And I think I'm only going to change that this the timer should just take only one. But if mouse X is zero, set the change timer to zero as well. Let's give this a shot. It's perfect. We can now change targets super fast. And when we go out and when we click, we get, we automatically lock on the closest. Well, yeah, we don't close on, we don't do it on the closest. We do it on the closest, but Yeah, I guess no, we don't do it on the closest enemy at all. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. It still works. So, that's it for this part. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and if you like to see more stuff, more videos, more series, more of everything. And, well, if you generally like what I'm doing, which you probably do, since you're watching like the 225th, Twenty fourth episode, you probably like it. Anyway, then consider supporting my Patreon, so we can do a lot more of this and different things, of course. I'll see you next time. <laughs>